Psalm 16, a miktam of David. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. With eternal pleasures at your right hand. In this psalm we see David calling out for help again. He does it a lot, doesn't he? Uh, and taking refuge in God again. And, and you see him immediately recognize that God is everything he needs. Have a look what he says. Follow through the psalm as we look at this. Verse 2, he says, You are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good things. Verse 5, uh, God is his portion. That means God's his true wealth. God is my cup. This means God is his pleasure, his wealth, his pleasure. Verse 7, you see him praise God. Verse 9, he says, my heart is glad, my tongue rejoices. Verse 10, he has confidence that God will not abandon him to death. And then in verse 11, you see that he's filled with joy in God's presence and has eternal pleasures through God. In short, when you recognize that uh, God is your only hope, that God is the only good in your life, then you'll be fulfilled, joyous peaceful, safe. You'll feel rich, even if you aren't. You'll be grateful uh, you, because you'll recognize how blessed you are. You'll feel eternally secure, trusting in God's care for you. What a beautiful picture of peace, a beautiful picture of trust and stability we see in David's words here. But contrast that with the frightful experience of those who run after other gods. Have a look in verse 4. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. Tim Keller uh, comments on this verse in his devotional on the Psalms, My Rock, My Refuge, the book's called. Uh, listen to what he said. We may not believe in literal, divine God beings of beauty, wealth, pleasure or fertility, but we must all live for something. And if we live for and love anything more than God himself, we're trapped. They have become things we have to have. And so we run, exhausted after them. End quote. Uh, did, did you notice the use of run in verse 4? Uh, running is the opposite of peace and rest. It's the opposite of stability and contentment. Well, false gods are things we have to run after, trying to squeeze some type of life and meaning out of them. And Keller continues, Instead of doing this, we must, like David said, make God our portion, it's our real wealth, our cup, that's our real pleasure, our ultimate good. God often uses the tough times in our lives, like the one we're going through in the, at the moment, to reveal to us what our functional saviours are. Uh, you know, those things that we can't live without. And I don't want to downplay the very real loss and grief that you're experiencing at the moment. But this psalm does remind us that anything other than God requires us to run after it and it only leads to suffering. But when you're stripped bare, as many of us are now, we start to realise that God is our only good. And that's a good place to be in. Uh, because he promises hope in the midst of suffering. He promises life in the midst of death. He promises his presence in the midst of isolation. In fact, he's the only thing that comes running after you. 
Jesus was God's rescuer, sent to run after us and save us from the emptiness and ugliness of following these false gods. Let me finish with Paul's thoughts from Romans 6, verses 20 to 23. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. But what benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? You know, those false gods. What benefit did they give you? Those things result in death, Paul says. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness. And the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Stop running uh, and rest in the secure and eternal arms of God. Our portion, our cup, our peace and our refuge.